What's up everybody, my name is Dan On and welcome to Honestly. Okay, story time. I am a huge fan of a channel called Lad Bible TV. I think it's one of the best storytelling channels out there, period. And one day a video pops up and it's called Living with Tourette's. And I'm like, that sounds fascinating because I don't know a lot about Tourette's, I'd love to learn. I click the video and here's this girl and she's beautiful and she's super eloquent. And I'll admit when she had her first Tourette's tick breakout. Parents because of it, but uh, 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 f off, it was. I was like, whoa. <laughs> And granted, I'm pretty naive when it comes to Tourette's. Like, I don't know much about it, which is why I clicked the video. And anyways, I finished that interview and I, I learned a ton. I'm, I'm humbled and I'm amazed. I'm inspired because here's this girl who has taken something that has kind of haunted her entire life. And now she is beloved by millions. She is an incredibly popular gaming streamer. And her name, if you haven't guessed it from the title, is Sweet Anita. And I watched some of her gaming, gaming stream Twitch clips on YouTube. And I'm like, wow, this girl, you know, ha like ha hats off, to, like she is amazing. She's incredibly entertaining. She's super humble, down to earth. And yeah, I well-deserved. All of her success is well-deserved. And by the way, if you guys could leave a like, thumbs up, comment, all that. And if you guys are fans of hers, maybe even comment, let her know about this video, because it would be awesome if we could get a comment from Sweet Anita herself. Anyway, so I watch her, I watch some of her clips and me being me, the whole time I'm like, yo, what chair is this girl using? And that's how we come to today's video. This here on my right, your left, is Sweet Anita's chair. This is the Noble Chairs icon. This is the black edition. I'm not sure if it's the exact model that she has. And a huge shout out to Noble Chairs for sending this chair over. And I wanted to check it out because it looks different from the other gaming chairs that I've reviewed. And I thought to make it explicitly you know, clear the differences, uh, I would view it with what I'm sitting in here. This is the Secret Lab Omega. So this kind of will conclusively tell you that not all gaming chairs are the same, but more on that in a minute. Let's get honest. If you guys watched my review of the Secret Lab Omega, you'll know that Secret Lab has three chair sizes. They have the Omega, which is for small, medium folks. Then they have their Titan, which is their large. And then the Titan XL, which is for extra large folks. Also, the Secret Lab Titan and Titan XL have a built-in lumbar adjustment and not a lumbar pillow. So that's also something to consider. Very similarly, Noble Chairs has three chair sizes as well. The Icon is for small, medium folks. And then they have their Epic, which is their medium size but the Epic's design does not look like the icons. And then you have the Hero, which is their extra large chair, which again, the design compared to the icon, they're not the same. The icon is the only one that looks like a bowling pin here, okay? Or like a bird from Pixar or something. Me being five foot six, about 174 pounds, my feet hit the floor comfortably on both chairs, but I would always recommend getting a foot rest to kind of elevate your legs a little bit to get your knee to be just at slightly above 90 degrees, right? Not quite here, just a little bit elevated above. And as you can see, even though my feet hit the floor, I probably want something to prop it up just a little bit more for maximum ergonomics. Now, when I like to kind of do like an overall difference between the two, and I will say this, the Noble Chairs has the better sitting experience compared to the Secret Lab Omega, but the Omega wins in two areas. One is the quality, and two is gonna be in the laying down experience. So I'll try to break that down as I go in depth with each of these chairs. So starting from the bottom and we'll work our way up, okay? So the casters. The casters on both of these wheels are pretty much identical. They are excellent multi-floor casters. They're quiet, they do a good job. The legs on these two chairs, the Secret Lab Omega has very flat, very wide legs, and that's really good for if you're someone who likes to tuck your feet back and rest your feet on those legs, it's great. The, uh, the Icon does it pretty good too. It's a little bit higher, but it's still flat, it's still fairly wide, and I think you're gonna have a pretty good time if you like resting your feet like that as well. Under the chair is kind of where you guys are right. Like, the gaming chairs are very, very similar because the function, the paddles, are identically placed and do the exact same thing. So on the left side here of both chairs, you have a single paddle, which controls the bottom seat tilt on this chair. So I'll demonstrate what I mean here. So when you rock this chair backwards, you're able to, this bottom part will rock and tilt with you and you can lock it in place or you can have it come up and then lock it once you have it in a position that you like. So I think it's unlocked now. So I'll go ahead and lean back. And when I do, you can see that the bottom part tilts with me. You see that? 
The bottom is tilting with me, but now I'm gonna go ahead and lock it in place. And now, oh gosh, <laughs> sorry, my legs are too short. If I, hello, if I raise the back up, you can see that the bottom is still in this tilted position, which is the reason why my legs can't touch the ground. It has nothing to do with the fact that I'm short or maybe everything that's the heck that I'm short. <laughs> if you guys don't know, I'm five foot six. I'll talk about what that is in metrics down below. I'm five foot six, about 170, 174 pounds. And again, I'll put all that in metrics down below. But yeah, that's what the, the left paddle does on both chairs. So let me go ahead and undo that here. <sighs> there we go, okay. And then, now moving to the right side of both chairs. If you look at the right side, again, same exact paddles. You've got this paddle here, which controls height. And I'll just go ahead and tap that real quick. The same thing. Oh, oh this is the left side of the chair, that's why. Oh boy. <laughs> um, and you, you've got the height adjuster on that. The, and then you've got this lever here, right? It functions like car seats back from like the early 2000s that don't have the automatic ones. I still have a chair like this, a uh, car chair like this, where if you pull this, of course, it kind of controls the back here, and both of them have that. So that's pretty much it. Oh, there's one more, which is this knob on the bottom of the chairs, which is impossible to reach when you're sitting in the chair because it's so far down. It sits literally under your butt crack if you were to draw a straight line, and that knob tightens or loosens the back tension. So if you were to have the back unlocked, then it allows you to kind of swing back a lot easier. So that's kind of what that does. And that's it when it comes to the bottom part. So overall functionality is pretty basic. It doesn't have a lot of like forward tilts or seat panning forward and back and nothing like that. Now, moving up to the arms. So the arms are, they move identically on both chairs, but this is where you see a quality difference in both of these chairs because while the arms feel identical, the Secret Lab Omega has a longer arm and it's got a little like divot here that allows your arms to, it feels more comfortable than on this, which is very smooth and soft, but it's just kind of a flat surface and it's a little bit short too. But where you really see the quality difference is when you try to adjust the arms, there's a paddle on the outside here under the arm that you can adjust to go up and down. But, and I've had this chair for about a month now. And every time I go to adjust the arms, I end up grabbing, there is a space, I don't know if you can see it here, I'll show it in B-roll if not. There is a space right here between the lever and the metal components of this arm. And in there is a whole bunch of grease and oil from that, that allows the chair to function. And every single time I've gotten a whole sludge full on my fingers because I keep missing that. Now, the Secret Lab, on the other hand, it's really hard to miss. You will get it every single time, and I have not experienced that on this chair. So that's one of those areas that I'm kind of like, why is there such a huge gap here that you're able to kind of get your yucky fingers on, right? So there's that. Again, functionality is the same. They've got the, uh, out, they've got the up and down adjustment on the outside, and then on the inside, both have a trigger that you can slide forward and back the armrest. You can slide it out words and inwards and that is pretty much it. I don't believe you can slide it inwards and outwards, but I can't remember. Oh, you can. There's a third lever that you can push that's right sitting almost in the middle of the arms that you can push to kind of swivel in and out of the arms. So yeah, that's right. These are 4D up and down, in and out, swivel out, and then horizontal shift left and right. So those are the arms. And then you've got the pads. Okay, so Noble Chair's pads are much more inferior compared to the Secret Lab pads. Like, this thing just feels like it's a piece of foam that you picked up at a fabric store, whereas the Secret Lab lumbar especially, and even the headrest, it is a very, very nice memory foam cushion, and it's super luxurious. And so, yeah, the lumbar padding on the Omega is a lot better than on the Noble Chairs, and the headrest is the same story. While the headrest feels a lot better than the lumbar pad on the Icon, the Noble Chairs, the, the head, the head what do you call this? The lumbar, the, no, the neck pad or head pad or whatever is still much more premium on the Omega. This is what I'm talking about by the overall build quality is better on the Secret Lab. But the sitting experience is better on the Icon. And this is where I'm gonna really get into it here, okay? So hopefully I don't confuse you guys and hopefully I can do this in a way that's clear. So the reason why the Noble Chairs is a better, has a better sitting experience has to do with, I believe, two things in particular. One is take a look 
at this compared to this. What you're seeing here in the seat is that you are seeing a very high divot when it comes to the edges of, those, of the chairs. Compare that to the Icon, which has a much more natural kind of elevation here. And what that means is, if you try to sit in the chair and you spread eagle your legs, which I'm not gonna do because you guys keep leaving nasty comments. <laughs> um, so we're not doing that today, guys. But if you were to do that, you have a limit on the Omega. You can't open your legs as wide. And yes, I realize this sounds very dirty. So you can't open your legs as wide because these mountains here stop you. Versus on the Icon, you can go as wide as you like because there is nothing stopping you. And overall, you just have a much more freer feeling when it comes to the Icon. The second reason why the Icon is a far superior sitting experience compared to the Omega is because you really don't need this for the Icon. Because the Icon, Right here, you actually have a little bit of a bump. You have a bump here that serves as a natural lumbar support to the point where if I use that pad on here, I actually feel like I'm sticking out too far. My lower back is pushing too far in because it has a natural bump here. Now compare that with the Omega where it literally has nothing. It is a straight wall up versus this has a little bit of a bump. It like rolls out and then goes up. So the, the, the Icon feels like a little bit more ergonomic compared to the Omega, especially without the pad. Oh, there's a third reason why I think the Icon is a better sitting, has a better sitting experience, and it has to do with these side portions. Now look at the difference between these two. So the Icon here has this bulbous arm looking thing, but then look, it kind of sways up naturally and then it goes away versus the Omega, it comes up and then it comes in and then it comes up again. And what that does is this. So when I sit in the chair, let me go ahead and lower it down. So when I sit in the chair and I sit back with my arms rested, this bulb here, it rests on my triceps, right? And it sits right there and it feels good, right? Like it's kind of rest, it allows me to rest my triceps on it and it feels good, right? I'm allowed to like pull my arms back. The Omega on the other hand, if I were to sit like that, that extra bulb actually causes my arms, my triceps to be pressed forward. So let me go ahead and lower this chair here again. And if I were to sit back, it feels really awkward. Like it feels like my elbows have a home but then my triceps get pushed forward. So it feels super awkward. And this contributes to what I talked about. In the Omega, if I don't have the lumbar support especially, I have this turtling feeling and it has a lot to do with these arms because the, or not the arms, but this shoulder slash upper body mechanic because it pushes my arms forward and it makes me feel like I'm, I'm turtling here. Whereas the Icon, because it has a lumbar on the bottom and because the back isn't splayed as much, I don't feel turtled whatsoever. As a matter of fact, it feels like, and I know this is kind of a weird way to say it, but it feels like a totally normal chair, right? It feels like a totally normal office chair. And because of that, I actually much prefer the Icon's sitting experience compared to the Omega. I actually think it's a lot more ergonomic than the Omega as well. Now I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments about like, if you want ergonomic, don't go with a gaming chair, it sucks. I, I get it. I think for most people, if you have back pains, you should try not to get it a gaming chair. But I also met people who are in their 60s who have had back pain for years and the only chair that has fixed their back pain has been a gaming chair. I don't know how to explain it guys, but not every back is the same and I wish you guys would stop scaring people away, but you guys do have a point. If they have a really bad return policy, if they don't let you get your money back, then you should not fool with that because it's it's not worth losing your money for an experiment, right? Like if that's the case, try to go with a more ergonomic chair. Okay, I'm going to step off my stool, but yeah, there is a place for the gaming chairs, especially what I'm going to talk about next, but there are some people that I've talked to that where gaming chairs have saved their backs. I don't quite understand it because for me personally, I much prefer an ergonomic chair if I need to go ergonomic sitting because I do have lower back pain, but overall the Icon is a pretty good sitting experience chair. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the laying down experience. I already kind of talked about quality. The arms are better on the Omega. The paddings on the Omega are better as well. The laying down experience on the Omega is better as well. And that 
has to do with these arms, right? It's funny, while these arms are terrible for sitting, they are excellent for laying down, and it's because of this. And actually, the Omega's design, here, or the Icon's design here, actually makes it worse. So let me first show you the Omega, and then compare it with the Icon. So, if I were to sit and then splay down on the Omega, look at where my arms rest now. They rest very, very nicely into this curve, and it fits really nicely and it feels very natural and I'm able to lay back and I can rest really easily like this. My arms have a home. It's very soft here because they use, decide to use like, I don't know what this is, but it's like nice and soft cushion here and it feels really good. Now you compare that with the Icon and you get a totally different experience because on the Icon, if you lean back, now, my arms are not only jutting upwards because there is no like natural curve, but on top of that, if I'm wearing something sleeveless, there is nothing but stitching on this corner. And so you're gonna feel the stitching on your arms. Now, right now I'm wearing a pretty normal, um, you know, t-shirt sleeve thing, and I don't feel it. But if you're someone who likes to go sleeveless, if you're someone who goes hot, or if you're someone who never puts a shirt on because, you know, the whole pandemic thing, now you can work from home. If you're sitting like this, you might feel that rub of the stitching and it might get to you. So when it comes to an overall laying down experience, the Omega is gonna do it better. Now, I'm trying to think of what I was gonna say next. One last thing I forgot to talk about, the aesthetics. Okay, so Secret Lab has a ton of different design choices, a lot of different things going on, but I have to say that overall aesthetics for me goes to the Icon. Now I know it is a funky looking chair when you turn it off, it kind of looks like a penguin, but what I love is, first of all, I really like this crown logo, and I love that it's super subtle. These little things are super subtle compared to that and this, right? It is much more subtle, and I think overall, I prefer the aesthetics of this chair. Now, if you're looking for one of those crazy design chairs, um, Secret Lab's got you covered, right? They're gonna have the incredible designs that sell out quickly. I think they just released a Game of Thrones one. They look incredible, and so I think overall aesthetics, goes to the Secret Lab, but if you're looking for more something subtle, which is something which is what I like, the Icon is for you. So overall thoughts. Which chair do I prefer? That is a tough one. It's nuanced here, and I hate nuance. Like, I wanna give you a more definitive answer, but it really is nuanced here because the Icon is a better sitting chair. However, the Omega is a clearly better laying down chair, and you have to figure out which one do you want. For me personally, because I have chairs that I use to sit on, sit in on when I have you know back issues, I don't want one of these chairs for sitting. I would much rather pull it out when I'm ready to watch something, when I'm ready to read something. And because of that, my overall pick would be the Omega. However, if I was looking for one chair that could do it all, I would probably pick the uh, the Icon here because sitting to me for my back is much more important than laying down. Laying down is like once in a while. Sitting down is for hours at a time. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this one. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree in the comments below. Make sure you guys drop something in Sweet Anita's comments as well. Let her know that she could, if she could leave a comment here, that would be really awesome. Anyways, guys, until next time, I love you guys. Stay safe, and as always, stay honest.